is your opinion about passport bros? With all pros and cons, I would say it's all fair when it comes to find the right love. If you feel like you want to do it, do it, go for it. In fact, many of the guys in my life, even on TikTok, saying that being a passport bro and getting wife from other side of the world, other country, is one of the best decisions they ever made in their life. So, go for it! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boy. Hello YouTube, it's your boy the Passport Bro Wingman coming at you again with another YouTube video. The title of the video is called Passport Bros Will Become Plantation Bros Under Kamala Harris. And um, the way this video came about is, you know, after watching the debates and, um, you know, right around the corner we have the elections. I was just thinking about what if, for whatever reason, you know, Kamala Harris, you know, won elections. Now, me personally, I don't, I don't. Think that she's going to win. I think that um, I think that Trump is going to wind up winning. But I, I think that what they're doing with the polls is they're trying to the polls are somewhat uh, skewed on purpose. I think they're doing that just to um, help out the other Democrats and the other you know like that, that are in the Senate race and you know representative race and that for. So I think they're trying to do that for them. But I, I think they kind of uh, for the most part kind of got a sense that she's probably not going to not going to make it. But I just say for whatever reason, if she did make it, I wanted to talk about. Um, her impact on the passport bro movement and our country in general. And it's going to actually surprise you. Um, you know, a lot of people would think that this will come in and this actually will be a benefit to a lot of the women within this country. But I have, I beg to differ. I actually think that her election would actually do the exact opposite of that. If you remember back in, um, you know, 2018 and so forth, when Barack Obama came into power, if you remember, we thought that was going to be a time when he was going to empower, you know, black Americans and it was going to work to our benefit. But if you remember, when he got into power, we actually experienced more racist attacks. A lot of black people started losing their jobs and so forth. And really because they were trying to say that because a black person is, you know, the president, we've already made it. So there's no reason to really look after black people anymore. So I felt like um, as a result of that, they were able to usher in a lot of policies against black people. And you can't really complain because it's done under our black president. In the same way with a female president, there's a lot of policies and things they would like to put in place that will affect women, but they can't really do it under a man's leadership. So this way, by putting these things to place, the women can't really complain because you have a woman, you have a female president. So in that sense, just as they said with Barack Obama, um, racism is done in the same way people would say sexism is over. You know, there's no re there's no need, need for the you know division of the sexes because you know there's no need for extra protections either because you you have a female president now. Now you have a female president. What are you complaining about? You know, uh, you should, you know, at this point, you, you know, pretty much making the same amount of pay. You got a female pres president ruling over you. So um, any policies that take place, you know, has been pretty much signed off by females because you already have a president that's doing it. And to, to bring my point up to, to show you that I'm not just, you know, talking. If you remember, um, there were a lot of TikTok women talking about how there were more women who own homes than men own homes. And when I looked it up, as you can see from the uh, statistics, that is true. There are women, there are more women who own homes than men. But here's the caveat. If you remember, Kamala Harris pretty much said that she's going to do unrealized tax gains on, on houses or real estate. And with that mainly being women, it's going to highly impact a lot of the women. It's going to be a lot of women having to sell off their properties here's the thing people don't know there's actually been like a lot of evictions going on currently under the biden harris administration currently so just think about when she gets in there and with most women owning homes and she puts that policy into place think about what it's, think about the devastation that's going to have on a lot of women they're gonna have to sell their homes um and there's even women now on tiktok complaining about how much trouble it was managing their home on their own now they have to go ahead and sell the home which means they're gonna have to build it up they're gonna have to um get in good shape to sell it. They're going to need a lot of men to do that. So you have that going on. So that's number one. Next thing is what a lot of people didn't, didn't really consider is, you know, you got the city girl era going on throughout hip hop, throughout the country. A lot of women now saying if the man doesn't make $200,000, $300,000, he's pretty much dusty and so forth. Pretty much going towards, as Skylar would say, um, the uh, sugar baby, more like economy. And that's going to, that's pretty much going to explode with Kamala Harris because as you know, she made her way up the ladder 
you know, with Willie Brown. And that's kind of how she got a lot of her positions. That being said, they asked her about decriminalizing. Let's say I got to be careful on YouTube. They asked about decriminalizing the red light activities. You know, I know, you know what I mean by the red light activities. If you go to Philippines, Thailand, or Amsterdam, or that kind of thing, you know there's a red light area, if you know what I mean. So they asked about these activities, and she pretty much, as you can see, she pretty much said, yeah, she would like to do so. She just basically felt that as long as no one is harmed in the process, it should be okay. It should be decriminalized. Now, she was going towards, there's a thing called the Nordic model. She was starting off with that. But if she gets in there, I I, I kind of suspect it's going to kind of go um, completely be decriminalized. And you say, why is that? If you remember back in New York, this was under this was during, like during the tr Trump era when we had the COVID situation going on. It, actually, in New York, and I believe in what was the other city? Um, it might have been a part of California. They actually de oh Seattle. It was Seattle, I believe, it was Seattle, and it was New York, and also a part of California. They pretty much decriminalized red light activities. You know, um, because they felt like they were wasting too much time doing that. We already short on resources because of the whole COVID situation. So they pretty much decriminalized that. Now, once she gets in there, and that's as she has said, whatever happens in California, that's going to happen across the country. So she's going to take that same policy that was happening in California and um, bring that all across the country. And surely, but sure, you're going to see that all across the country. So the whole sugar baby economy is going to explode. They're going to have to because um, not only are when, you, when, when these unrealized tax gains start going across the country and causing devastation keep in mind that um she's trying to put in like a lot of different policies she talked about price gouging how she's going to uh put restrictions on a lot of these uh companies and, and then a lot of people already said all that's going to do is um start getting people to be laid off in addition to that with all these markers and stuff all you're going to be doing is printing more money so just basically what's going to happen is inflation is going to increase it's basically going to increase under her. So you got inflation increasing because basically what they were trying to say with her, with her, with her attacking price gouging. Because here's the thing. They were trying to say, where does price gouging come from? And they were saying it really is no price gouging. What they're saying is by her, by, by that administration printing so much money, that actually caused inflation. So that's why the prices are actually so high. But So by her trying to use a policy of making making uh setting prices for a lot of the products is not really gonna um it's not really gonna help the situation because now you get in a situation where the where the company has to either make the product of less quality to bring down the price or they're gonna have to start producing less which means they're gonna have to get rid of like get rid of workers and so forth which means those workers get laid off they're gonna need additional services party unemployment and that kind of thing so it doesn't it's not really gonna help for the most part and then um yeah, so you have that going on. The other thing was, um, there's a there's a lot of talk about, and the other thing people didn't consider was they just got rid of the DEI um, DEI situation for a lot of like college admissions. Now, um, recently, as you can see in this article, she wants to lower the requirements for those who want to work in the government. So before you had to have a certain amount of degree, and but now she's making it what you're going to lower the requirement. You say, what? Why is that a big deal? How would that hurt? you know uh you know film is ism you know why would it hurt that the reason for that is a lot of women in general who have these jobs they have they generally have government jobs they generally work in the government and um and a lot of times because of like the whole di situation they can work for all these other big companies but now with that going these companies don't have to hire them and with the government jobs reducing the requirements that means they're going to hire a lot of foreigners and so forth. So a lot of these people flooding the border and coming over the border and so forth, they're going to take those jobs, especially these uh, military age men. They're going to have those jobs. So that's going to push out a whole segment of female workers who ordinarily would have had those jobs. But now they're going to get replaced by foreigners. So now you got all these women who don't have any jobs uh losing their houses. There was a big talk about evictions and so forth. They're losing their houses. They don't have the jobs. Um, and all that leads a lot of times is for them, you know, getting involved in a lot of red light, sugar baby type activities. So that's why that whole industry is going to explode under her. You have that going on. Keep in mind, also, there's a lot of talk about no fault divorce and so forth. So because a lot of people would think, OK, what is the next position that a lot of women would take if they can't get a job? They don't want to do sugar baby thing. A lot of women say, OK, I'll go. I'll go. I'll go ahead and get married. Maybe I'll find a rich guy. I'll marry him. Take all take all his money, div divorce him and then just kind of move on. But now with the no fault divorce, you can't just 
marry a guy and just divorce divorce him for any reason. It doesn't work that way. If you you're pretty much, I'm not gonna say permanently married, but as Dennis Furlan has said, it kind of gives men more of a negotiation piece because now men can say, well, if you want to get out of this marriage, this is how we're gonna work this thing out. And what that what that's gonna do is reduce a lot of women just jumping into marriage to try to get the bag and so forth. Now, if they're going to get married, you have to actually make a decision whether or not they really want to, they really want to marry this guy because they may not be able to get out of their 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 marriage. So as a result, there's going to be a lot of like shacking up, more people just doing the boyfriend girlfriend thing. It's not going to be a lot of people selling down and that and so forth. But uh, but again, um, and at this time, and with that no fault divorce, they can't really complain because at that point, technically, it would have happened under a. Um, Democrat administration and, and and even more so under a female under a female president. So you can't really say it's the men taking control and we and it's the patriarchy. How's the patriarchy if a female is in, is in power? There's no patriarchy if there's a female president. So um, so you you know so you can't really at that point it's going to hurt a lot of women's claims to say that they're like a marginalized group because you have a female president. So how? How is the patriarchy in charge if you have a female president? That's going to be the big thing. And um, on top of that, you know, the Sanders have already got rid of permanent alimony. That's already gone. And I say that to say that as the situation kind of gets worse, because um, I know the title was how would passport bros turn into plantation bros. I say that to say this. And some, some passport bros have stated this. In many cases, a lot of us because the dating scene was such garbage here in the States or in the West, we decided to get our passports and leave. But my question to you is what happens when the tables turn and now everything is in favor of men and men become more valuable in the United States. Um, you say, how so? A lot of passport bros in general, for you to take a trip to Thailand, for you to take a trip to the Philippines, for you to go down to Colombia, Brazil, that means you have income. You have income. You have a good job. You got things going for you. And with a lot of these women losing their job because of because of a lot of these Kamala Harris policies, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to start looking for the men who have some type of means. They're going to notice you. So now what you're going to have to start doing is protecting your seat because you're going to have not just your hands filled with, you know, foreign women chasing after you, but you're going to suddenly see a change of heart in a lot of the American women here because they can't just get by. There's no more DEI. Um, a lot of them are not going to have the government jobs. They're going to go to foreigners. A lot of them are going to have these additional debt as a, re as a result of this unrealized gains tax, which is going to cause a lot of them probably to lose their home, be in debts and so forth. So what's the next, thing, next, next best thing to do? To find, find you a man, find someone to take care of you. So suddenly a lot of the passport roles who have to go to other countries, you're going to start, you're going to suddenly start seeing your uh, DM box or, you know, just in general, you're going to start getting a lot more attention in the States and in the West that you've, than you ever had before. You're going to suddenly start seeing a change of heart. So this is going. This is what I meant by how she's going to turn some passport bros into plantation bros. So I guess my question to a lot of the guys listening is, you know, if this is going to cause the women to come back to the table, they always talk about coming to the table and so forth. Some guys say, burn the table, you know, use it as firewood. There's no coming back. But you're going to see a huge change in the way a lot of the women view men, especially men of means, which in many cases is the passport bros. For you to be able to travel. That tells me that at least you have your finances in order and you're going to become very, very, very much valuable um, under the system. Now, I, I, I don't care for Kamala Harris. I don't like her as a politician. I think she just she's just Joe Biden 2.0. And again, I don't think she's going to win. But but the whole thing of this video was just just to kind of throw it out there. Just to say, like, for whatever reason, she did win. What would that kind of look like for the passport bro movement? So I just displayed it for you that. It really would take down this whole um, man-hating culture in the United States. I think it would actually empower a lot of men and actually um, drive up our value, the demand for men and the value of men as well. Um, because, because, because pretty much it's going to wipe out the whole perception of male privilege. Because what? How can we have male privilege when you have a female president? That's the whole premise of this whole thing. So. But that's all I have for this video. I don't want to go in depth, but just wait till you see my next video. Next video is going to be about the opposite. I'm going to talk about, you know, if instead of Kamala getting there, what is what is the passport world movement going to look like under Trump? So look out for my next video coming soon. And to all my ghost listeners and those who just chime in, listen here and there, uh, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to my channel, hit the thumbs up, hit the, hit the notification bell. 
And I got a lot more coming. I know I've been out for a long time, but I had a lot of business I had to take care of. But I want to get back on the grind. I got lots of lots of ideas. I've been seeing so many Password Bro videos. I've been wanting to comment, but I've uh, been very busy with taking care of a lot of business and so forth. But I plan to get on the grind, get back in the mode. So until next time, subscribe to this channel. And I'll talk to you again. This is the Passport Bro Wingman signing off. Dear Passport Boys, Dear Passport Bros, stop calling yourself Passport Boys and Passport Bros. Are you going to the Philippines to look for a Filipina queen or what? So stop calling yourself Passport Boys and Passport Bros. Start calling yourself Passport Kings.